How does imagination function in your field, your work, your sector? That's a very good question. Uh, I think if you can't imagine it, you can't do it. And uh, so I, we, we got to start with uh, everything starts with imagination and, and, and being able to visualize what you have and then believing you can do it once you imagine it uh, and put the team together to get it done. Mm -hmm. But it really all starts with imagination and visualization. Uh, I'll give you an example. A few years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, um, we, we, we saw how, uh, how difficult it is. We recognize how difficult it is to maintain our infrastructure in the northern part of the United States, bridges and far apart and so forth. And it takes a long time to rebuild them. They corrode very quickly. Uh, we asked ourselves, can we imagine different ways of building bridges? Can we imagine a, a day where we can replace the bridge in a week or two weeks? Uh, uh, and uh, how would we do it? And can we imagine bridges that will last, um, uh, instead of uh, 50 or 75 years, last, twi last twice as, as long as that? Um, and it started there with imagination. And uh, we imagine a bridge that you can inflate, bring it in a backpack and inflate it. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, it becomes stronger than steel in three hours on the side. You can shape it to any geometry you want, and you can fill it full of concrete, not need rebars. And when we imagined that, um, um, we, we, a lot of people thought we, we were simply imagining. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, today we, we have a business in Maine that's producing this bridge. We have patents on it. There's traffic in Maine that's uh, driving over such bridges. There's seven of them across the state of Maine right now and a business that's uh, kitten them in Maine and ready to sell them across the country and the world. What will it take to foster these practices in Maine? Over the last year, we've uh, taken it out to ourselves uh, to become missionaries in schools across the state of Maine. We've gone to elementary schools and we've gone to high schools where we, um, we have a team of us uh, that we, I talked to you about imagining floating wind turbines. Okay? Uh, people used to tell me a couple of years ago, how could you ever float a wind turbine that's bigger than Washington Monument? What would happen when, when the uh, perfect storm arrives? It's an all top over. It's not going to work. And we've proven all that wrong. We've proven it works. I've got videos to show you of prototypes we've built that actually survive uh, many doomsday scenarios and perfect storms. Uh, but, um, but we've taken that to students. We, we, um, uh, we go to elementary schools and, and go to, cl to classes and tell them, okay, we're going to now design a floating turbine. Here's a kit and here's a, here's a little uh, uh, water bucket. You're going to make it in the next hour. And so, so it was really interesting. Students get very involved in this. And we started a, a, a competition across high schools for wind turbines in the state of Maine. We've ran it for three years right now. And this year we had... Uh, uh, 60 teams, uh, 350 students from high schools across the state of Maine that came here just last week and, and uh, competed in two competitions, one of them being uh, designing and building a floating wind turbine that we placed in our pool at the university, created waves and created wind storms on them and see which ones actually moved less under waves and winds. It was an amazing competition. The faculty got involved in schools, the students got involved in the schools, they went out and not only designed and learned and, and thought and imagined, but built some of the most um, innovative uh, ideas of how to float a wind turbine. And, and it was, it was, it was, it was uh, the, the, the amount of imagination I saw across schools in the state was, was astounding. And we provided the winning students, um, each with a $50,000 scholarship, uh, to come to the university and work in the center uh, for the team. So, so this is the kind of ways, in, in many ways, to do that. Under the STEM programs, we're also trying to, we're working with the state right now, uh, to, to, to take ideas like this and, and embed them uh, throughout the, um, uh, the, the curricula. And, um, and when you think uh, where, where art, art really is, is kind of the source of imagination, the art fields, uh, and engineers are less imagine, imaginative and more analytical, if we can somehow bring those two fields together, uh, arts and engineering in, in many ways, I think we can, we can, uh, we can get, that, get, get more art being taught and, 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 and in, in, in the context of engineering in essence. You know, you think of uh, uh, some of the best engineers in the world, they really were also artists at heart. <laughs> so, so, there's a, so maybe there's an opportunity for us here to take these examples of the floating wind turbine competition and many others and embed them across the schools and have both the arts uh, students working with the engineers and others or, or people interested in engineering too 
to, um, uh, to carry some of these ideas across. You gotta really get people excited. You gotta have imaginative ways of getting arts <laughs> and, uh, uh, in, into the curriculum. And this may be one way to do so. Like in some competitions like that. Or, uh, uh, so certainly, you know, uh, in, in the fields that we're working on, we are working very closely with the schools through these hands-on learning uh, experiments. And I think creating a, a variety of these hands-on learning experiments that can be incorporated into, into the school curricula uh, could be a way to bring imagination and, and ideas uh, uh, in a practical way forward. So, so I, and, uh, and everybody loves the competition too. It's not just a project you do at school. Mm -hmm. You can you can take your project and you compete across the state or maybe across the country. So, so putting that competition edge into these projects and creating maybe a series of these projects, learning learning based projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, certainly, at least our experience in doing that for the floating wind competition and the wind tur wind rotor competition has been has been extremely positive. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe formalizing that, if you wish, at working with the Department of Education in Augusta and saying how do we take these ideas and coming up with five or ten projects, learning-based projects that can become state competitions that form the basis for imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, could be a good way, an easy way, a very inexpensive way to bring some of this into the curriculum. So, mm -hmm. so.